Hello, this is a follow-up to a video I made some time ago showing some standard functions that I use to make price comparisons and manipulation easier where there are different trade types used. The problem I'm trying to solve is that we repeatedly have to deal with conditions based on whether a trade is a buy or a sell. The code to deal with this isn't too difficult, but it is cumbersome and the more often we have to use code like that, there's more chance to make a mistake. So I've created some simple utility functions that simplify this coding. I'm also revisiting this because I've got two other techniques that I'm going to show you. This is an example of typical code that I used earlier when I did a video on trailing stops. Uh, it shows how we have to do comparisons of the order types and then use different conditions in order to determine if the price is higher or lower or better or worse in the direction of the trade before we apply a new stop loss price. The aim is to go from this to this and make the code simpler, easier to read. The functions I originally showed in the earlier video still work and I have no problem with using them at runtime, but I've had some feedback that they can be difficult to read and to follow. So I developed some replacement functions that are a little easier to understand themselves. I'm also going to show two other versions of simplification that use different techniques, but they're equally effective. And I'm just going to explain the differences between the three and where you might want to use one or the other. I'm going to create these functions inside an include file. And to use the trailing stop function from an earlier video as an example, I'm going to create them inside the same trade functions file that I used in that video. There are three sets of functions. Simple comparison functions like greater than and less than, math functions to add and subtract in the direction of the trade, and I'll explain the diff function later, and market functions to get the open and close price relevant to the trade type. Without some kind of helper function, all of these calculations would have to be wrapped in conditions that make the coding more complex to read and create more opportunities for error. First, the comparison functions. I'll start with GT or greater than because the others are just variations on the same principle. Note that I've used trade type percent two compared to order type buy here. This is a shortcut and let's explain how that works. If you didn't already know, order types are just enums and enums are integers. The values for the six order type enums begin with zero for buy up to five for a sell stop. Trade type percent two takes the modulus two value of the enum. For all of the buy enums, that will be zero. And for all of the sell enums, it will be one. That makes an easy shorthand to check if the order type is for a buy or a sell without listing all of the enums. Next, I've simply broken the function into two tests. One test for the order type buy, where value one is greater in the direction of the trade if it is numerically greater than value two but for an order type cell, value one is greater than value two in the direction of the cell if it's numerically less than value two. Then I simply duplicate this for the greater than or equal, less than and less than and equal functions. And I make the appropriate changes to equality being greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to on each of the sides. Now the math to add, subtract, and take the difference, which I'll explain in a moment, in the direction of the trade. So if it's a buy trade, an add would simply be a higher value, and a subtract would be a lower value. But for a sell trade, they're going to be in the opposite direction. I'm trying to encapsulate all of that in a simple function. I'm using the same trade type percent two, but I'm not checking for the sell side, assuming anything that's not a buy has to be a sell. And I'm using the ternary operator to you calculate V1 plus V2 for the buy and V1 minus V2 for the sell for the add. The sub function is just the opposite of the add function for uses like calculating a stop loss price from the current price and a gap. But there's a problem when comparing two prices. For example, to calculate pips of profit, the result would not be what is expected. To address this, I've also created the diff function, which correctly calculates the gap between two prices. The reason for this is that when calculating the difference between two prices, the prices are both directional, but when calculating one price from another using a gap, the gap is an interval and is always in the positive direction. So the sub and diff functions return different values. You intuitively know if you want to calculate a new price or a difference, and if you go through code where this is done, you'll see that your code is used in different ways for each of these two cases. So think about this simple example for a sell trade. Let's say the current price is one and the entry price was two. Then the profit is just two minus one, which equals one. 
Now if the current price is one for the same sell trade and you want to calculate a stop loss price two away, obviously the result should be three. But if you use the same formula, you get the same result, which is one and incorrect. It's a nuisance to need the diff function, but you know in your code if you're calculating a price or a gap value, so you should know which function to use. Sub to calculate a price and diff to calculate a gap. Finally, the pricing functions are simple. When we open a buy trade, we open at the ask price, and when we close the buy trade, we close at the bid price. Sell trades are the opposite. So the open price function simply returns the ask price for buy and the bid price for sell, while the close price function returns the bid price for buy and the ask price for sell. These functions need the symbol to get the market information. So I've also added overloaded functions that take the current symbol from the chart as a default. Compare the original trailing stop function with a modified version using these comparison functions. I still check that the order type is buy or sell, but I only do that once at the beginning of the function to eliminate limit and stop orders because I didn't want to process those. Then there is no conditional logic within the body of the function based on order type. All of that is handled by the functions we've created. So this block of conditional processing has been replaced by this simple condition and order modify statement. Earlier I also had a get trailing stop price function to calculate a trailing stop price a number of points behind the current market price. It used the trade type percent to shorthand but still had to do comparisons for order types buy and sell. By creating the general functions I've reduced all of this logic to a single line statement using both the close price function to get the closing price for the symbol and the trade type and then the subtract function to subtract my gap from that price. Now to the second option and for this I'm going to use macros. I'm putting them inside the same include file and I've used slightly different names on the macros to the function names because I've left the functions here I don't want to get any compiler errors by having name clashes. You can see the syntax is similar it takes three arguments, value one, value two, and a trade type, but there's no definition inside the macro of the data types for these. Macros work by simply replacing these values within this provided string and inserting that into the code at compile time. Because this is built in at compile time, it removes one function call and is potentially a little faster. I don't know if that's going to make a significant difference, but it is an alternative. The function itself, trade type percent to equals order type by, is identical to this function. I've removed the return statement because that's not required, because this is simply inserted in line. And I have added parentheses around each of these to make sure that there is no ambiguity when they're replaced in the code. And you can see that each one is the same, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Add, sub and diff are the same. But because these are macros and work on a substitution level, I cannot do overloading. So the open price and close price do not have the option to take the chart symbol. You can, of course, define these with only the chart symbol, but that takes away some flexibility from your coding later. Now again, let's see what this does to the trailing stop function. I've used my macro underscore LT to do the less than comparison here and you can see it's achieved the same level of reduction of code from the apply trailing stop that I achieved by using the function calls. In fact I've left the function call here so that we can see this code is identical except for the use of the underscore LT instead of the LT. And if we look at the get trailing stop price function you can see that I've achieved the same thing in the get trailing stop price using macros that I did using functions. I've simply replaced sub with the underscore sub for the macro definition, close price with underscore close price. So these are functionally identical in this case. The final alternative I'm going to present here is using classes. Now a couple of things about using classes before we go too far. Typically I would place a class in its own file but I've included these in the trade functions file here just because it's easier for the demonstration. I have also embedded all of the functions inside the class header 
rather than extract them out later. I just find that for short functions like this, it's easier and easier to read. In this class, I've also added a trade type private variable, which will allow me to create an instance of this class storing the trade type, which allows some overloading of functions where the trade type isn't required to be passed into every function call. Now, the greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal functions are all the same as we had earlier, with the exception of these overloaded versions, which use the trade type private variable if it is not passed in. To achieve that, I have two constructors for the class. A base constructor taking no arguments and a constructor that takes trade type as an argument. Now in your code, you may not need this, but if you're going to run this function multiple times using the same trade type, it may save you some effort to create an instance of the class with that trade type and then simply reuse the class again and again to get the results. If we scroll down a little, we can see that I've created multiple overloads for the open price and the close price, allowing you to either use the chart symbol or the trade type used when the object is created. And finally, down to comparing the trailing stop functions again. All of this is similar from the earlier use of the functions. But here, because I'm using the class, I'm creating the compare object and this statement's been added and you can see now that the function calls are compare.lt um, and I have used the lowercase lt again to differentiate it from the function call lt in uppercase. And to demonstrate the use with the trade type passed in during instantiation it would simply be a statement like so where the trade type is included and then in this function call, I no longer need to pass in the trade type. And then to the get trailing stop price function, uh, similar treatment, I simply create an object of type C compare and use the compare.sub and compare.close price functions. That's all for these functions. I hope you find this information useful. If you did, please click the like button and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like covered. If you would like to download a copy of this code that I used, then I've placed a link in the section below. Thank you for watching.